Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Link. And I'm Rhett. This week at the Oval Table of, it's kind of a mix of outdoor and indoor lighting. It's very nice. We're going to be answering questions that we've never answered before that we asked you to ask us, and I believe that we have the people who asked those questions present. Oh. Uh-huh. Right there. So, we, we actually haven't, we haven't talked a whole lot. Yeah, you know, how you doing, we're like, like, We're moving around, we're going from thing to thing, getting ready for the next thing. How's your, uh, how's your, how's your Mythicon, Rhett? Uh, well, I just took some Pepto. Um, I mean, I'm doing great. I also just took some pepper. Yeah, I saw that. I, I went up to Jenna, and uh, she was in kind of a, a group of people. I leaned in and said, can you give me some Pepto? What's happening for you down there? Well, hopefully nothing, and that's, uh, that's why I took Pepto. But then, do, you, you know, when you see somebody taking pills, do you just... That's not a good habit. Just when you see somebody taking pills, they then say, well, can I have some of those pills? Because that's what happened. Well, b when, when I saw that you were chewing it, I was like, oh, it's a chewable. Yeah. Well, that's you, really my jam. You have a thing. Um, With chew I, you know, I love to chew. Well, but also you have a thing where you don't really know uh, when a pill is a chewable or a, what's the alternative? Swallowable. Swallowable. <laughs> Swallowable? Yeah. And I've tried to explain this, that typically the flat discs are chewable and the capsules are swallowable. Right, but I don't, you can, I'm pretty sure you can chew everything. If you try hard enough, yeah. Like, I mean, if, when it goes to your stomach, it's like, it, your stomach chews it. I don't know. I feel, like, I feel like I'm really getting the most out of whatever I'm consuming if I actually chew it. That's why I chew pudding. But no, I mean, I can see that you're concerned about my stomach, but it's totally fine. And Link's is very much fine. I just, he's yeah. just taking preventative Pepto-Bismol at this point. It's great. A little bit doesn't hurt. And I think it makes your poops like... Real pur dark. Purple. Yeah, real dark. Makes your tongue dark. It's like the color of your jacket. Hey, later on tonight on our main stage show, we can both stick out our black tongues because that's what happens when you put that bismuth, whatever the active ingredient is. No, not now? yet. No, not yet. You got to wait. Okay. Congrats on the show last night. James and the Shame was awesome. Oh. That was a lot of fun. Almost too much fun all at once, too early. You seem like you were having the time of your life. I was having the time of my life. Jessie was having the time of her life, too. Yes, she was. I was watching from that vantage point over there for a little bit, and I was like, well, I don't want to be a distraction. And I went away, and then I came back later to, to, to give approving nods of your performance. I felt those. Yeah. But somehow, just based on what Charles said at the beginning of your podcast, it feels like me and Charles are in a little bit of a competition. I mean, I, I don't feel like I started it, but he was talking about he didn't want to show me up and he didn't want me to show him up. Right, right. Yeah, he kind of stole your thunder when he made an appearance and everyone was cheering yeah. for him, not you. Well, but I do want you to know, just to be prepared today uh, for the next hour or so, I don't have any barbecue sauce. Um, I'm not going to do any dancing demonstrations. Man, he got Nancy up there. I love that. Pretty great. Pretty great. Yeah. It's Is that just like a, thrill. a typical Friday night for them? I think so, yeah. I yeah. love it. It seemed, like, it seemed very automatic for them, didn't it? You want to answer some of these questions that we've yeah, never let's, answered let's, before? Let's get to some questions. You want me to, re you want me to read it? So okay. what we'll do is we've got a microphone down here. We think that everyone who has a question is present. We'll just ask it, and then we may uh, ask you, why'd you ask that question? Bonnie Stewart 
right here. Bonnie's right here. We're going to bring a mic to you, Bonnie, but I'm going to read your question while the mic is coming to you. Um, so Bonnie asks us, if you were a ghost, what location, item, or person would you haunt? Do you have life insurance taken out on each other? Yeah. Well, that's a, that's kind of like a hard left turn in the middle of this well, in, I, I inquiry. Well, I, I can see how that those might be related. I like if you're going to die, who do you want to ha uh, haunt? And does the other person benefit from your death is basically the two-part question. Now, am I reading this right, Bonnie? Yes. I mean, basically, I, I like ghosts, so I have to ask. And then also, I work in entertainment production, and it's something my husband and I have always discussed is like, I wonder if they do that. I, I figure you have to, but I'm just curious. Okay, well, let's start with the ghost part. You're, you seem like a demented person. <laughs> You're in the right place. <laughs> if you were a ghost, what location, item, or person would you haunt? Well, I mean, first of all, I think the most strategic thing uh, would be haunting you. Right. Because I feel like it would be a way for you to, like, continue to have a vibrant career. Right. You could, like, lean into my ear and say, that one's not chewable. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that. I mean, Ooh, I, that one is chewable. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely do that. I would give you advice. But I'm just saying that yeah, yeah. if you didn't want to have to rethink everything, it would be simpler for you if we just continued to be a duo, but I was a ghost. Kind of like that Smosh movie, Ghostmates. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> Basically, we would just be following yeah. the plot of Ghostmates. Right. Uh, so T-Pain is now involved in this? Uh, hopefully, yeah. Um, would people see you? You're not visible. So I would just seem very, very fixated on your you know, your memory. I think I would function like a typical ghost, which is, I don't know if it's real or not, and that's what a lot of people would think about you. I think I would just call you, like, my imaginary friend. Okay. Which is not far from reality, right? I imagine that you're my friend right now. I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> well, I mean, do you imagine that I'm your friend? Uh, I mean, I think, I believe that you're my friend, Link. Right, so, but if you were to think about it in an abstract way, you'd be imagining our friendship, and doesn't that make me your imaginary friend? Okay, technically, yes. <laughs> yeah, we can be each other's imaginary friend, dude. But who, who would you it haunt? It could be a new aspect of our relationship. Okay, we can talk about that later. <laughs> Whether or not we will become each other's imaginary friends. <laughs> <laughs> uh... I know that you really like scaring people. Oh, I love it. Yeah. So you're really, I hate your question <laughs> because I don't like being scared and I, I, get, I get afraid if I need to scare somebody. So it's like, I'm, I would just be the worst ghost. I think I would definitely have to possess somebody. Is that an option? Uh, demons can do that. Oh, like, demons. I don't think ghosts, you wanna be a demon? That's yeah. A different, that's a different yeah, question. I'd rather be a demon. I do think it would be fun, though. Again, I don't really know what I believe about this, but if I died and was suddenly a ghost and I was like, oh, that is a real thing, I think I would haunt like a very popular atheist like Richard Dawkins. <laughs> Show him I would just for. give Richard Dawkins hell until he like breaks down. And he's like, Aye, they're real. <laughs> Ugh, my life's work <laughs> is ruined. Uh, and then you're like, it's just me, Rhett, that guy from the Internet. <laughs> yeah. It started out as a hypothetical question in a live ear biscuit. Right. Um, I don't know why I'm using that voice. Is yeah, that, that the voice you would uh, use? No. I'd probably keep my own voice. I mean, but it would be more ghostly, right? Like, tell me to choose something. No, I'm not going to. I know you're that. not my puppet. No, I'm not going to. You can imagine that I did that. You're not as cooperative as my dad. Right. Um... Okay, second part of your question. Yes, we did have an awkward conversation with uh, the people who help us make these decisions about insurance and such. And we do have an insurance policy on one another, which is 
pretty. It's wild, right? Think yeah. about it. I mean, because you get to a certain point and you're like, well, what do we do if, like, one of us kicks the bucket? Or when one of us kicks the bucket. And if, if it's sooner, I think the other person gets more money. I don't know. Is that how it I, works? I can't let's, remember. Do we have it on us? Let, let's read the life insurance yeah, policy. Yeah, I don't have it. Like there's, yeah. So if it's, it's if one of us, is there anything wrong with talking about the specifics of this? Well, all, no, no, only. Of course not. Nothing other than the fact that you will almost definitely be wrong about it. Uh, other than that, yeah, it's totally fine. I mean, there was it was probably like 40 pages, and then you just get to a point where you're just signing it and saying, okay, this is something about if I die, Christy takes over from me. Christy. Or she just gets the money that I would get. Based on the contract that I and read. And you got to keep doing stuff. Based on the contract that I read, Christy might want you to die. <laughs> It's not, I, I, mean, I have, I have a lot to offer. She's very pretty. Yeah. But that's how we designed it. Like, yeah. it's got to be some silver lining. Well, we, it's going to we be actually, really sad if one of us dies, but at least it's like, good gosh, now look at all this money. Here's the thing. We talked about this on the way over here, and we made sure not to tell Christy about this because we flew separately. So Link and I and Jesse were on... Uh, and Stevie as well, we're all on the same flight over here, and then Christy came with Shepard uh, and Lando and Lincoln later. Right, because we, like, didn't, we didn't want them to miss school. And I was like, what if this plane goes down? <laughs> <laughs> she said, welcome to my yeah. world. I, the reason we didn't bring You're it up always is thinking we that. didn't want you to think about this, but basically what would happen, and this is what we talked about, was Christy would just be in charge, She said, that's right, baby. And then uh, very quickly it turned into uh, that Christy was going to do something uh, with, Cass with Cassie, Stevie's girlfriend. It was going to be the, the Christy and Cassie show, and we thought that that would be, that would be great. pretty awesome. Yeah, so, I mean, but, so there, there you go. The answer to your question, we literally had to think through all the scenarios. We're like, well, if one of us dies, what if both of us die? What am I... We figured it all out. We're totally ready. Ready to die. Ready for it. And haunt Richard Dawkins. Just like the Biggie Smalls album. Okay, next question is from Jasmine Lopez. Where's Jasmine? Oh, right here. See, okay. okay, I love this question, Jasmine. Nice hat, Jazz. Can Thank I call you, you Jazz? Thank you. Jazzy. Jazz, Jazz, Jazz. Smooth like Jazz. I could call you Jazzy, but that's what I call my dog. Keep it as okay. jazz. Yep. This is, uh, there's a peanut lot Peanut butter jade. Long-legged peanut butter jade. Can jay? I get to the I'm question? allergic. I also call him that. I also call him uh, Jazzy Jeff. DJ Jazzy Jeff Probst. I call him that. Jasmine says, my man and I broke up. Who gets to keep you? Oh. Him well, that introduced me to you all or me that fell in love from the second episode I watched? Oh. Oh, wow. Okay. So, first of all, you're here. He's not. Exactly. So. <laughs> and the, the tickets weren't his birthday gift, but since we stopped talking, I'm here. So I thought that you would take a, spe a special interest in this because... Um, I'm very interested in this. You have a tendency, I've observed, to believe that if someone is into something, someone else close to them cannot also be into that. One of the best examples of this and the earliest example of this was when your stepsister, Emmy, just liked music. So you decided, you're like, I can't like music. She's taking music from me. Right. Like the whole vertical of music. Yeah. Not a genre, all music. I remember it like it was yesterday when my mom told me that, she said, now, Link... Jimmy and I are, we're getting a divorce, and you're still going to be my son. She didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> and the first thing I, rem I remember saying was, oh, thank God, I can like music again. <laughs> I won't be related to that stepsister of mine. And, that's, and, and now I love music. So it's like, 
A lot of good can come from a really proper divorce. Right. <laughs> right? You know what? You just, you know, you just, you know, sometimes, sometimes life gives you lemons. And... I just threw them Make out orange now. juice and let the world wonder how you did it. You know what I'm saying? Okay, what's your perspective on that, Jazz? On the lemons? <laughs> just on, I mean, it seems like embedded in this question is the same principle that you feel like you both can't go on liking us in the same way. No, because he looks exactly like you, so I, oh, I'm stuck. Oh, he looks stuck. exactly like yeah. me? Well, then why'd you okay. break up? She saw the life insurance policy. <laughs> Something like that. Okay, well, this has gotten very complicated all of a sudden. So it seems like you... Uh, c can you each choose one of us? Yeah. And only watch, like... Like, you only watch... Like, half of the screen? Do you want to watch Red, or do you want to just watch me? Because you want to watch me, because you're over him. Yeah. <laughs> Right. I understand that. I mean, we did think for a while about right. selling some sort of um, device that you could place over one half of the screen, but then we realized that's just paper. Yeah. And uh, Mythical.com, buy paper, so you can cover up the one you don't like as much. But, you know, interestingly, what we could do to make that even easier, and I don't want to, you know, sign our team up for any unnecessary work, but there could be... Like, like we never do that, always. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the things that happens when we talk is that we end up giving work to people by accident. <laughs> right. Yeah. Stevie had to come up with crabs inside of crabs last night. <laughs> She's got to figure out what that means. <laughs> right. Um, but the, uh, I think maybe some sort of filter uh, that just edits one of us out completely of an episode. I think, I think you should do the same thing that we tell everybody to do when they complain about not being able to play along with the games. Just put your hand over the answer. Right? Yeah. Put your hand over the answer. Reddit. <laughs> Is Reddit here today? Is Reddit represented? Okay. All right. Yeah. What? This what? guy's got an idea. <laughs> right. He oh. introduced her, and then she started from the second episode. Oh, oh yeah. Why not the first oh, episode? My... The second episode was on my own. The first one was together with him. And oh. I, I was like, okay, that's potential. And then it came okay. out in my YouTube list, and here I am now. Okay, so you just feel like you got the, what you needed out of that relationship. Right. And now we're getting twice the views, so. <laughs> exactly. All are welcome here. Just, you know, just, just agree to not talk to each other. And see you over the internet yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. Matt oh, Walker, right here. Okay, we've moved these people to the front. Hey, Matt. Hey, how's it going? Great. Now, on a scale of one to five, how intelligent do you think your question is? Zero. <laughs> yeah. yeah, off the yeah. chart. <laughs> Just so long as we're clear. Right, yeah. Matt asks us, do you think you could survive for an entire year only eating five-pound Velveeta cheese blocks? <laughs> Follow-up question, just how thick do you think your blood would get? <laughs> okay, Matt, I have a question for you. Sure. Um, are you preparing for some sort of challenge? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can give some backstory if you okay. want. Um, so at work, we work in a room with no phones, so we get very bored uh, and come up with the strangest questions that we can think of. So this is just to pass the time, um, and we... we figured that out so you said that you work in a room with no phone we do it so sucks. you get bored yeah <laughs> oh. this is the white house where what are you it talking is. about yeah. <laughs> oh you're not gonna tell us i can't <laughs> i'd have to kill you okay. <laughs> and take uh, out that life insurance policy <laughs> <laughs> there's a life insurance joke in there somewhere <laughs> okay um why do you think we can answer this five intelligently pound Velveeta <laughs> cheese blocks it turns out that's the biggest block you can buy. And we calculated that if you buy one a day and eat that whole thing, it's about $45,000 a year of just Velveeta. Okay. So you've got the budget covered. Right. Well, let's talk about the health impact. 
fo- that's the follow up question. Forty five thousand. Do you right? have to eat all five pounds every day? <laughs> that's a that's it's too a much. Challenge, dude. I guess. Uh, well, that's not going to work. Okay. Yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, all you can have is Velveeta cheese, which is not even really a cheese. It's probably a cheese product, right? <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Um, Mostly plastic. Man, that'd be a rough year. First of all, I can guarantee you that. <laughs> yeah, I think it would it would come to a halt pretty quick. The whole the inner workings. Can you drink water, or do you get the the moisture Just from Velveeta. the cheese? There's water in it. There's okay. water in yeah. it. Yeah. Just You're Velveeta. All your, <laughs> all you your moisture from the cheese. If you squeeze a block of Velveeta, you get cheese water a out of it. A five-pound block. Yeah. That's important. So, yes, yeah, so you're drinking cheese water, eating cheese. I, and there's a thing. I, I, you know, Christy is a cheese lover. You're a cheese lover. Yep. I, Christy a, got me cheese for my birthday. I like cheese. But I just don't understand. I think it's something. To hear Chrissy talks about it is like there's something that happens in her like loins. Well, I don't want to get. I don't want to say anything inappropriate about your wife while she's just behind you in my line of sight. But she's not in my line of sight. <laughs> like this is this is all on purpose. But I do believe that the same thing that happens in your brain during sexual stimulation happens in your brain while consuming cheese and chocolate. So this might be something you need to look into. Why, well, you know, I, I'm, I like to stay hydrated. And so that's my thing. Yeah. Like, th- through, through all intimate exercises. I've heard that. So now if she wants, yeah. if I want, I'm going to serve her, I guess, pizza and Velveeta. Yeah, I've heard that you're known to take a water break in the middle of a <laughs> encounter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you can start taking a Velveeta break. <laughs> you, did, you just keep a block of cheese next to the bed. I mean, that's a big block of cheese. I think that might count as like a threesome at that point. Yeah, oh gosh. <laughs> a cheesesome, someone uh, said. Just that's how it. thick do you think your blood would get? You would die. This is not, this is yeah, not yeah. a good idea. But I do For think you record. should try it. And Thank I think you, you should start a YouTube channel. <laughs> I'll send you the link. Okay. Do not do that, Matt Walker. Where do you want to go now? You want to go here? Yeah. Uh, is this Evie or Ev Field? Right Ev Fields. Hello, Ev. Okay, this is, a, this is a multi-part question here. Now, we all know that there will come a day when you retire and stop creating content. But if everything were to disappear besides the merch and the memories you've left on people, what kind of impact or legacy do you think you would have left in that hypothetical situation? Hmm, that's interesting. But hypothetical. Because how would that ever happen? Yeah, because we think about, and we've talked about on this show before, just this reams and reams of content over, you know, like, 16, we're looking 20 years, eventually, it'll be more than that. So much of our lives are on the internet. I mean, just look at Ear Biscuits alone, and we've yeah. talked about how much is there. I, I take strange comfort in that. And now that you've taken that away from me, <laughs> hypothetically, yeah, the merch on its own, we got, we got some good merch, and we got a lot of merch, too. <laughs> like, we've said a lot of things on T-shirts. But I don't know what people would conclude if they only had the merch. They'd be like, were they NASCAR drivers? <laughs> One of them was a snake. Like, there's just, right. there's just so many, can, yeah, we're still good. There's yep. just a lot of different conclusions. Rub some bacon on it. That's an old shirt. That was one of our first merch items. It yep, still works. The technique still works. Rubbing bacon on things. Boil for safety. There's just a lot of things that out, out of context wouldn't make a lot of sense at all. Now, if you got, if you got hold of the Book of Mythicality, that would, that would explain a lot. That would help But you. that feels like cheating at that point, right? So let's just yeah. say that doesn't exist. I just like, like he's got the feel-good Mythical Morning shirt on. You know, I, I think that even through our merch, there would, there would be this message of feel good, accept yourself, accept others, and let's... Be nicer to people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I do think that 
a lot of the slogans that we put out into the world are things that like come from our mouths and our conversations, but they also are just a great indication of the relationship we have with mythical beasts that you know it's we kind it's it's we kind of feed each other in that energy right like the you you gather the people that have similar energy and i you know i'm just glad that uh you know when we meet you guys at the meet and greet lines or see your faces here uh and we just we soak up your energy that there's so much positivity there's so much uh acceptance and a welcoming vibe that like every, everybody doesn't look the same everybody's everybody doesn't is not into all the same stuff like it, it you know there's, there's a, it's an eclectic group but you have this you have this um now if you keep yelling i, I cannot keep a train of thought yeah <laughs> all right G- kick that did kick, you kick did that you person just... out you are not accepted <laughs> You were judged. Well, you know what, what I was, was trying to say. Yeah. Well, th- I think that's Finish my favorite. My, point. my favorite thing about being here is that there's a group of people who they get all of the inside jokes and all of the references. You know, right? Because it's one thing like when you've got a friend and you know somebody like in your town or whatever that's like another mythical beast. But I assume and I can kind of see it on your face is that being in the presence of other mythical beasts in this way where it's like this unspoken thing is pretty cool. Yeah. That's what we were hoping for. This is literally the coolest thing ever for, like, amazing. And this isn't the first thing I've ever seen with you guys, so, like, I just threw myself right into this. Outstanding. Welcome. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Well, I told Jesse, you. you know, we, you know, because she was, she, she hasn't, performed in quite some time. You wouldn't know that based on wh- how she did last night. But I kept telling her, I was like, you have nothing to worry about. This is the warmest group of people that you will ever imagine. Like, we could literally get up there and just, like, bomb so hard, and they would tell us that we did a great job. Well, that, that's kind of the reason I wanted to ask this, because, you know, for me what you guys have given me is so much more than just the content. Um, I'm not trying to get sappy here, but I wouldn't have... Do it. Okay, let's do it. I would not have come out as transgender if it wasn't for you guys. You have... You have made such a safe and welcoming place. I have never felt more accepted and loved here, and you guys just exuded that. And for me, the reason I ask this is because... Your impact is so much more than just the surface content. I mean, yes, you're eating crabs inside of crabs, which <laughs> some might say is not the highest quality content out there, but right. just, just the way you embrace the weirdness and all of us, and also on Ear Biscuits, just being so open about you guys' stories and your own histories and journeys just helps someone like me be like, you know, feel comfortable with actually being curious about themselves and exploring that so just you guys are great for that and I really thank you for our, just the positivity and love thank you for sharing that thanks Ev now yeah that's that means a lot to us and I want to go back to the beginning of that question was about retirement right wasn't yep. it retirement you're talking about retirement. Let's talk about that for a minute. Um, you know, we're at an interesting point in our careers right now. You know, it's, we, there's a lot of opportunity. And honestly, there's a lot of different directions that we could take mythical in. Hmm. And, but, you know, because, and I think a lot of it has to do with being, Middle-aged, you know. Who are you talking about? I mean, yeah, you, you, you're, you're, you've broken the forty-five barrier. I think that's past middle-aged. I think is it, see for you, you're past yeah. middle-aged, and you just start to think about like, all right, the future. You think about like, uh, by the time we're fifty in our early fifties, then it's where you know the kids are, are going to be out of both of our homes. You think about like, is there? Do we have the ability to retire at some point, like 
earlier than most people, conceivably. We also have the ability to, like I was saying, take the direction of mythical in a lot of different ways. We're trying a lot of things that aren't, that aren't just about um, the content we create, but like there's a whole business side of running uh, mythical and saying, all right, what are, what are the initiatives that we want to invest in? You know, one example, the Mythical Creator Accelerator, you may be familiar with that we invest in up-and-coming creators who are building their own brand, and we want to be footsteps that they can follow in when our experience was we really didn't have anyone to emulate. So we, we saw that as an opportunity. It's a business opportunity. It's a legacy play for us to say, how do we invest in up-and-coming creators, help them benefit and build their brands. It's totally separate from Mythical, but by using, you know, w with our guideposts so they can be healthy and thrive and put their own version of good out into the world. That's very exciting, but it's separate from our own work as creators. So at times we find ourselves... Um, being pulled in many directions or seeing that our company can be pulled, pushed, or sent in all types of directions. And well, I think, and I, these are conversations that honestly we've, we've been having, right? G given, given where we're at in our careers, I think. So, well, it's kind of the balance between running a business and starting new lines of business as we continue to, to grow Mythical and then remembering that we are creators first and foremost, and sometimes it's just difficult to do both of those things. I think the thing that we're excited about that we really haven't talked about at all, you'll be the first to hear about this, is that we're really seeing 2023 as a reinvestment in us as creators. Um, and you may be like, well, you already make so much stuff, but I think that in terms of some of those uh, maybe if you've been watching for a long time and some of those early videos that got you into the mythical world that uh, maybe leaned a little bit more into us expressing ourselves creatively, that's uh, something that we really want to press on in, in 2023. So, but I think that as we think about retirement it, in general, well, the, the, the way I've thought about this is even if we were to say, okay, we're going to retire and um, uh, I'm going to go live in a little cabin with Jesse. You're invited, Jesse. Um, oh, how nice of you. And I think you're the one who might need an invitation. And, and then oh, I'm going to just do woodworking nonstop. The, the problem, regardless of what decision we made individually as what we wanted to do in retirement, there's no doubt in my mind that we'd be trying to find a way to turn that into content because we can't help ourselves. Right. And also turning it, if like, if I had a cabin somewhere in an undisclosed location and you had a cabin, I don't know if you want a cabin or what, what you want, whatever you want, your version of a cabin. Um, yeah, you really put me on the spot, but sure. I'd like for it to be really modern. The van is what people are saying. Yeah, I'll park my van at my ultra modern cabin. But even in that scenario, there would be some way that we Because I like were... having a toilet that's not in my shower. Okay, good. I agree with that. We would have... There would still be content, you know? Right. We'd be like, hey, we got to do our podcast. Go, I mean, to, go I, to the spot in your van where you do the podcast. I'll go to the spot in my cabin. Because I think it, it will be... I want to do that. Right. Not, well, we got to do that. Well, that, you think, when you think about retirement, you think about being able to... Been, begin to pursue what you want to do and what your passions are if you're lucky enough to, to, to do that. And I think that we're just privileged to be doing what we want to do already. Already. And there may be some things that uh, aren't as fun, you know. It's not as fun to run a company as it is to make content. Uh, so I think the thing that is always going to be there is going to be making content. Yeah, I think that... That's a lot of the soul searching that we've been doing recently has, and conversations that we've been having about what do we really, what do the next five years, 10 years look like for us? 
I mean, we're, we're, we, we are specifically having those conversations. And the thing that really invigorated the conversation and it's like, it kind of felt like a light bulb moment and it's, it's what you just said, that like we find ourselves in this amazing position to have the opportunity to express ourselves because of all of you. You know, it's like without an audience, you, 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 you can't make things in a vacuum. And the fact that there's so much enthusiasm and trust uh, and excitement for what, for what we want to do and how we want to connect with each other and connect with you guys, that, that gives us a good amount of freedom, yeah. right? And saying, we can, we can take even more advantage of the creative freedom that we have now by cooking up even more things that we can share. You know, um, as opposed to working on things in private and in secret and then hoping to develop them by playing somebody else's game and then no one ever seeing it. Yeah, we spent, you know, we've you know, done a good amount of that. We talked about that. We did the whole Ear Biscuit where we talked about all the ideas that we had come up with and all the movie ideas and TV show ideas. And, you know, for years, we've taken a pretty big part of ourselves creatively and tried to package it in a way that we could drive across town, uh, and have a meeting with a group of important people and trying to talk them into letting us make something. And after so many years of doing that and just repeatedly being told that uh, this doesn't work, or even when it does work and they want to do it, they want to put their spin on it in a way that makes it not what we wanted to make, we're beginning to be like, okay, stop trying to convince those people to let us make something and just start making stuff for you guys directly. So... We got to figure out, you know, how that looks and how we do that as a company, but that's that's where our minds are at right now. Yeah. And so you see what happens when the word retirement enters our brain and then it comes out as how do we express ourselves? You know, I think that's exactly how we think about retirement is that we don't, I guess. Yeah. In in that sense. Um but we do think about cabins, I guess. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. maybe in Very one modern. sense we do. Mine's going to be rustic. Okay. Uh, Jasenia? All right, your question. It's uh, pronounced we're gonna, Jasenia. We're, Sorry. What, what is it? Jasenia. Jasenia. Yeah. What emotion do you both feel the most? Oh. What emotion do we each feel the most or both feel the most? My theory is that it's the same emotion, but I'll let you go first. Um... Gosh, this is tough. <laughs> um, Christy and I just went on a little getaway into, uh, we went back to Big Sur. And, you know, you, get, you lose reception. So you got to be, you got to be strategic about like downloading what you want to listen to. And we downloaded um, the audio book, Brene Brown's book, uh, Atlas of the Heart. I uh, highly recommend this book, even though uh, I only listened to the first two chapters so far. Usually that's all you need. Pretty awesome so far. But she takes you through all the, all the emotions that can exist. I'm like, wow, there's so many emotions that I, I didn't know I could have. And it's, you know, she, she lays the groundwork that, like, it's really important. It, it, it opens up your life to be in touch with your emotions, and to be able to identify more of them specifically, kind of, it, it gives you a vocabulary with which to understand your own experience, yep. and thereby live a more robust experience. You know, if you just think, well, I can just, I just feel anxious, or I just feel, sometimes I realize that Anxiety is actually anger, or like if I say I'm frustrated, it's like, well, that actually may be anger, but, and then I, but then also saying, hey, there's, there's lots of different types, of, there's, there's, there's joy you can experience, there's lots of positive emotions too, that's what I'm trying to say. I want to experience all of the emotions, but what's my, Agreed. so that's my recommendation. I don't know if it's my rec today, but Atlas of the Heart. 
Yeah, that should be the wreck. I don't. I don't have. So, one. I don't know. Um, I think, like, I don't want to. I don't want to just go to anxiety. <laughs> that's that's definitely me. Yeah. <laughs> well, just let's be, just be honest, but man. I think that that's probably that's probably that's probably my go-to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty good. Same. I got a I got yeah. a pretty good anxious sweet spot there. It's just like <laughs> nestle right down in there. It's like like that divot in your bed where you're like, oh, this is where I lay every single night. And I can tell if I shift over two inches in the wrong way. You know, it's like, oh, I'm back in that anxious spot again. Maybe I should roll over. Roll over into joy. Roll over to joy. That that's your book, Link. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Roll, roll over to, into joy? Roll, roll, roll over into joy, yeah. Okay. I'd read that. I'd read the first two chapters. Um, is Goosebumps an emotion? Yeah, potentially. But So I, I totally appreciate what you're saying, and that's something that therapy has helped me with, is like um, you feel something, and then you are... If you lean into it and you get to the bottom like, of it, you're like, that? oh, there's something beneath it. But generally speaking, and this may be, this is, I kind of figured that's what your answer would be, and it may be surprising, maybe even surprising to you, but I think that as you, as you look at a list of emotions, I think that anxiety is probably the thing that is operating the most often for me as well. I, now, I may like deal with it, or it may manifest itself differently, and people may not be like, um, oh, I wouldn't have, you may not know that. Even if you're interacting with me, I don't tend to like let you know that that's what's happening. But I was thinking about the way that I interact with this, this weekend, right? Yeah. You know, one huge part of it is anticipation and just knowing that we're going to, we've thought about creating this experience for you guys that we, you know, we, we've got a team that knows you really well and knows what you like and what you want and, picking a special spot like this. But then right on the other side of every one of those anticipations is an anxiety about something that could go wrong, right? Is the Ferris wheel gonna come down and just roll through the whole town? <laughs> just taking people one by one and throwing them, you know? Uh, and then you're like, oh, we made a decision to do this outdoor event. Was that a mistake? Is it going to rain? Yes, it's going to rain on day one. <laughs> um, and then things like, okay, oh, the performance last... I, I'm like ch choosing where am I going to place m my worry. It's like, okay, I'm going to do this uh, concert, perform these songs that I've never performed for a crowd. You really want to kind of have warmed up a little bit in front of like some people, but uh, I don't have time to do that. So let's... Do, oh, it'll be fine. Let's just do it. You know, Jesse's got anxiety about it. Um, and then there's there just just all the things, and then we've got this ridiculous show that we're gonna do tonight, where we're only doing the things that we're gonna do because it's you guys, and we know that you'll have a fun time watching us do something that we probably wouldn't <laughs> take out on the road. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's like a lot of you know, and I don't necessarily think I would call it a. a an anxiety disorder, but it is definitely the general thing that's always there just under the surface that you can dip into at any point to be like, okay, yep, these, that's, that's something I can attach some energy to right now and worry and try to figure out. Okay, I'm gonna change my answer to horny. Okay. <laughs> I don't believe that's an emotion. You might wanna talk to your therapist about that. Um, That's like saying that your love language is sex, which I tried to pull that one time. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, really? It's not. Yeah. It can't, can't. It can't be. It's not an emotion. It could be physical touch, but it's yeah, not always that kind of physical touch. Okay, but well then I'll just go with uh, goosebumps. Okay. How, how are you? I feel like I'm. I don't. I feel like I've been pretty chill here. No. I, yeah. And I think uh, Jesse and I were talking about it last night. Um, how chill I am? Yeah, how chill Link is. <laughs> the, because the thing that you want to be able to do is, and, I'm, and I feel like with each year that I get older, I get better at this, is 
not just wanting something to be over, right? There's so much of my life when I had something like that performance last night or right. what we're doing tonight where I'm just, I'm actually sort of fantasizing about getting to my hotel room and lying down. <laughs> right? No, and, and you try... And they, they probably don't want to hear that. Yeah, right, because just, just get through it, don't screw it up, and just get to your hotel bed. And, but that, but, you're, but you're, you're acknowledging that, like, that's, something's wrong with that. Yeah, and I actually... The, well, and... Being able to talk to Jesse throughout the past months <laughs> yeah. about her being a part of this actually was helpful. Like being able to tell her some of those things that I would tell myself was therapeutic for me because I was like, listen, the experience is going to be when it's happening. Like, don't let that slip by. Like, anticipate it, look forward to it, and then enjoy it when it's happening. And yeah. I think that by talking about that so much, I actually, when it was over, I didn't have a sense of relief. I was like, oh, man, I'd like to do that again. Or I'd like, I wish that had gone on longer. I wish that was still happening, you know? That's good. Yeah, so I'm getting better at that. So you didn't run to your bed right. afterward. Well, we did run to the bed. <laughs> so what are, what are we learning here? Yeah, it's like we've, yeah, we've, we've had the privilege of experiencing so many things. Like, it's, we, we lead a really wild life, being able to, like, just, like, live our dreams. And, but, yeah, there's something to, like we wrote about in the book, you, like, making a decision to stop and celebrate, you know, and say, like, this moment. I'm here for it. I'm in it, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I just want to go back to giving you guys credit that, like, you're, 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 you cre you've created an environment for us here that, like, I'm not freaking out, but instead I'm like, the, they know what they're here for, and they know what they're going to get. So I just let's, just, let's just go with it. You know, it's, you can't, you might as well not try too hard. Just, just let it happen. Let it happen. It's a safe space. So I do feel like I'm, I'm, I'm living it up. Yeah. I feel I'm, like I'm, I'm here having for a it. good time. I'm having yeah. a good time. And I, it's, it's so much, um, it's so much different when you go into a place where you're having to, uh, explain yourself or prove yourself. It's like, right. So that's what I was talking to Jesse. I was like, this weekend is built on, you know, for some of you, it may be days or weeks or months, but many of you, years of a relationship, you know, that we get to come in here and have together for a weekend and experience in, in person. <laughs> Jamie, how are we doing on time? We got. When are we supposed good? to be done? I think we're just rolling right along. We're good. Oh, we're okay. good. So, uh, Mike Davis, right there in the leopard print. How you doing? Hey, Mike. Hey. Um, what up, Mike Davis? What's going on? I don't think we've ever answered this one. What's your least favorite episode of Good Mythical Morning? Least favorite episode. Do you have an answer? Somebody yelled out Ghost Pepper. Well, the, I mean, the Carolina Reaper. Wasn't it worse? It was worse. Well, the, the ones that definitely... People think the horseshoe. People think the blind taco. Blind? Blood taco. Blood taco. I was like, what's a blind taco? For, I mean, if I think about like, the physical effects of, of an episode... Um, I don't even remember what it was. It wasn't the ghost pepper. It was that other one, the scorpion pepper, where I was in Good Mythical More. I was lying on the couch. Oh, yeah. Um, and I was just, I had lost the capacity for entertainment. <laughs> like, I was beyond being energized by the, what was happening, and I was just angry <laughs> and scared and anxious. <laughs> and uh, that was bad. And then, of course, the longest-lasting negative physical effects was that... Um, the glass of vinegar where it just led to like a duo or donto with smosh yeah and it was that was horrible um 
That's the reason we ended up buying them because I was so angry about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, don't cross me, I'll buy you. I, to me, you, you, th you think it's the Grape Nuts vlog? Yeah, that was torturous. Uh, my, see, I don't have an answer. My least favorite GMM episodes are the, are the ones where it's like, what, it sh I think it would be, if I could come up with one, one that I was like really excited about that then sucked. Because it's like, yeah, it, the food stuff when we're miserable afterward. But it's really hard to point to an episode that was like a complete flop. I mean, you might not like some of the guests, and I'm not going to throw any guests under the bus. So let's remove those. Yeah. Like, we've, we've had a few guests that, like, absolutely sucked. Yeah. Right. I think I might thought, start a Reddit thread where everybody can just talk about which guests sucked the most. Yeah. That'd be but great. we'll leave that for there. Um, but it's, you know, it's a real credit to the mythical crew that makes the show. I mean, you've seen the evolution of the show, right? It's like changing over time. That, like, they know the show and us so well that, like, they're, they're setting up parameters for the show to happen to us. You know, it's a really interesting thing that, like, the, the, the thing, our baby is now something that we basically said, all right, we're entrusting you to, to raise our baby team and then bring our baby to us and then, and then see how we react to it. <laughs> oh, it's my, it's my baby's back. Oh, you've gotten taller. You know? It's like sending it off to boarding so school. It's this weird, it's this weird like, like being just as committed to Good Mythical Morning as ever, just as excited about it as ever. And knowing that, like, there's ways that we can infuse ourselves into the show even more by entrusting our team and stepping back from the, this, the meticulations of planning. We've done that increasingly year over year, and I think it's really having a positive impact on the show because it gives us this an, a increasingly more authentic performance that's you know less and less of a performance and more of just an authentic experience of us yeah. behind that desk you know so i i can't find an episode where it was like i was so excited and then it just bombed or didn't come together because like they you know they they have all the right places that matter most there and you know so it's you, we can kind of mess around with it and I actually think that, so the cliche answer I always give is, well, who? You, Mike. But people ask the inverse, like, what's your favorite episode? And I'm always like, the next one. Because we do, but what that, it's just like, we are excited about where the show's going. You know, we're excited about the things that we can do. This, that desk, that set, that environment is a playground. Yeah. for us. And that's another part of what we've been talking about in realizing, hey, what we've built together, how can we take more advantage of it creatively to continue to push boundaries? We, I mean, continue to eat stuff, yes. We're going to keep eating stuff on Good Mythical Morning, and we're going to keep doing other things, too, you know? Uh, it, it, Because it needs to be fun for us. It needs to be fun for the team that's making it with us and blindsiding us with it a lot of times, right? Yeah, and you know, I think that some of our, this wouldn't be a least favorite, it's like, when am I the most, I'm actually changing the way I think about this now, like, you've, we've talked about this before on Air Biscuits, when we try something that we think is creatively ambitious, or we do something that isn't us just eating something, and then it performs at like half the views because that's the way the internet works, but I know that's not how you guys feel about it, uh, because you're very vocal when you do like watching us take a creative risk and do something different. And not only because you watch, many of you watch every episode or most episodes, and therefore you're not just like, I'm just coming in for this one, and I'm coming in for this one. Um, so we actually have you in mind more often than it may seem like sometimes. 
And again, that's that sort of like, well, this has got to be a business that supports the team, but this is also a show that is for us and for you and for our collective experience. So we're going to keep trying those things, and we're not going to be surprised or disappointed if some of those things that may require more effort or more creativity or more time from the team don't get as much as many views as it's just sitting down and trying every flavor of a Hot Pocket. Um, <laughs> but we'll continue to try to make trying every flavor of a Hot Pocket as uh, entertaining and informative because these things matter. Right. Right? Right. Today we are eating another block of Velveeta cheese. Uh, Let's just do that for a month. To turn that question back on you, Mike, do you have a least favorite episode of GMM? I do. Okay. The, probably the horseshoe. The horse one? <laughs> yeah, sorry. It was a little boring. Are you... Are you... <laughs> ah, I was bored. I too. almost died. I didn't have anything to do. I was like, what am I doing here? I don't think I should do anything. Are you like, are you a horse guy? I'm not. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how you, that makes me feel yeah. better or worse that he's not a horse guy. He's just there, bored there, with it. There was a whole level of humor that you just didn't get. Yeah. Horse humor. Horse humor. Equine. Yeah. Yeah. Some of, some of, them, some of them aren't for everybody. Yeah. You know? Right. It didn't turn out how I thought it would turn out. Yeah. 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 You, you saw my anxiety on full display in that video, boy. See, it's, it, it, it's important for other reasons. It's important to be bored sometimes yeah. by our show. I had to take down all my posters of horses that I have up around my house. <laughs> like Jesse was like, why, is all, why are all the horses in our decor coming down? She loves horse decor. <laughs> it's kind of her specialty. We're, we're working on a um, Thanksgiving episode that you are going to hate. Awesome. <laughs> it doesn't involve horses, but... Turkey! Uh, it, but you will be bored. Yeah. So don't miss it. Won't. Okay. Uh, the last question, I'm not 100% sure. Is Abigail Naylor here? Oh. She, we're going to have to toss that microphone. Oh, you're way Just, back there. Way back there. Oh, we just got the yellow card. Got the yellow card? Yeah. Um, this better be a good one if this is the last one. It is. Uh, so as... Okay. They're Sorry. right there. Sorry, I'm late. So Hello, sorry. Abigail. Hi. <laughs> Hi. So you had a question about friendship. What I advice... Did would you give to us for maintaining such a meaningful relationship with each other for the many years to come? Yes, that is my question. This is my lifelong best friend. Well, like 11 years since we've been oh, friends. That's so, No, yeah. We got a long way to go to compete, but um, that's just, a, she's just like everything to me. I moved to a new state from North Carolina, moved to Louisiana with her. I knew no one as a little, little 11 year old girl. And like, she was the first person I met the very first week I moved to Louisiana. And she's just like, if you know me, you know her. If you know her, you know me. So I just wanted to get y'all's advice because y'all have such a great lifelong relationship, friendship. So, yeah, that's just my Clarice. So, yeah. And what's your friend's name? Her, my name is Clarice. Like, Clarice. Like, Miss, like, Miss Clarice? Yeah. Yes. Like Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, oh, yeah. I would. He hasn't seen it. We, we actually yeah. both have the first same name. We're both Abigail. But she goes by Clarice, so yeah. That makes it simpler. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, gl I'm glad you knew her name. Yes, I learned that a couple days ago. Because yeah, I was going to say that's the that's a good first step <laughs> yeah. to friendship. <laughs> it is. Having the same name also helps. That too. She didn't tell me that till like two weeks after we knew each other. She's like, oh, my name's Abigail, by the way. I was like, that's good information to have, Clarice. So. <laughs> two weeks to find out her name. <laughs> All right, we got to give some. We got to give some some good advice here. It's the last question. Um. Well, you know, we've answered this. We have answered this question, but we wanted to talk about it again. Uh, friendship, I friendship is not easy. No, you know, um, you know, I I'll I'll sing a lot, guys, because I'm a, I'm a guy, and I talk to the guys about friendship sometimes, and it. Uh, they're like, well, it's, t it's tough for guys. 
sometimes. We're guys. We have an extraordinary friendship. There's like lots of, there's a lot wrapped up into it, you know? So there's, there's a lot at play here. In some ways, like friendship or even best friendship is an inadequate description of the nature of our relationship. Yeah. I mean, so, so we are best friends, but when you're that and you're also business partners and you're, you're, your performers who a cornerstone of your performance is friendship. Yeah. Like, I mean, there could be some, there's some unique challenges for us because it's, there's a lot wrapped up in it, right? Uh, it, it's certainly very important to us to actually be friends because we care about each other. Right, but also, and then secondarily, because this doesn't work if we're not actually friends. Like that would really suck. Right. Yeah. Right. You're saying that if you make your relationship the product, and then the relationship is over, that is a big problem. Yeah, we've never seen that happen before. Um, <laughs> the um, it's interesting. Somebody sent me something recently that talked about how the number of friends in people's lives decreased dramatically because of the pandemic. And specifically, uh, number of close friends. I thought you were going to say because of children, which is also, a, uh, you know, children will kill friendships. No, but specifically Especially because babies. of the social dynamics. Oh, my gosh. The social dynamics, with that. the way that things changed with the pandemic, right. uh, there are is an, I would say an alarming percentage of people who do not have one close friend. Like, that has increased. But the number of... Cl- and this is something that has just been moving in that direction culturally for a really long time, so I do think it's more important than ever. I, one of the ways that we have answered this question in the past... You know, we always talk about communication. I want to come back to communication because one of the things that I've said, and then we've talked, we talked about this recently on our own, is... The way we would answer this question on um, one of the tours, I think it was maybe Bleak Creek or or whatever, because there was a question about friendship that would come up a lot. And we would talk about how having something that you're, a common goal was key to a long friendship. And the fact that we were building something together and so you've got this baby that you share together in the same way that like a marriage may have kids. Um, you pointed out, which I agree with, and while I think that that is somewhat true, and I do think it's actually true because for a lot of the reasons that we're saying, there's a lot of things at stake, and there's also a lot of things that bring us back into each other's lives because both of us tend to kind of, I mean, you're more extroverted than me, but in a lot of ways, we can go a pretty long period of time without having meaningful interactions with with somebody because we have so many things going on. And there's a lot of people maybe back home in North Carolina that were good friends with us that we're just not the greatest at staying in touch with people um, or initiating and maintaining those long distance friendships. So one of the things we're thrown into each other's worlds over and over again all the time. We're constantly in each other's worlds. So there, that, that's one of the things. Right. So there's no out of sight, out of mind. That's never going to happen with us. Right. But you kind of pointed out the inadequacy in that um, analogy Because the negative way of seeing that is you would say that if it were a marriage and people were just in the marriage because of the kids, then the day that the kids leave, the marriage is over. And that happens all too often. And you made the point that, well, that's only part of the answer and probably not even the most important part of the answer. The answer is the friendship is valuable because the friendship is valuable. And the friendship uh, remains and is important because of the value that the friendship brings, not because of the thing that you guys are building together and the way it benefits from your friendship, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think definitely. When, you know, it's when we're both excited and going after the same thing and we're like in this. Like, especially if we're in like a creative flow, it's very, 
exhilarating to be there with your lifelong best friend and to say, we're, we're going after this thing. We're making this thing. We're, and it's, and it's, it's kind of a magical synergy. It does feel great, and it does edify me and I think our connection. Mm-hmm. But there's, yeah, there's also that personal side to it that's like, yeah, but we're also actually friends. I'm restating what you're saying in other words. That, and I think this is kind of where our answer is, is that it takes a lot of work to maintain a, a, re, a relationship, you know? And for, it, I, th- I think it's very important that we have given ourselves permission to say this is, we're committed to this and it requires work. And there's times when it's not going as well as other times. Mm-hmm. And given ourselves and each other permission to express our needs in the friendship is something that uh, I think we're still learning, right? Yeah. I mean, we're still growing as individuals. We're, like we talked about earlier, like getting in touch with your emotions, understanding that there's a lot more of those out there that can be a part of your experience. Like that, it's, a, it's a similar experience of like knowing how to apply the principles of relationship to our to a friendship because you think well you you can fall in this trap that like friends should just be friends because it's easy you know like you don't make friends it, it, the, your closest friends are people that like you just find yourselves hanging out with and having a good time with oh i find myself liking this person but that's not, you, you know, a friendship is not going to thrive long term if you don't give yourself permission to say, no, this is a relationship that needs, that requires work and energy. And if you're, and, and a big part of that is being vulnerable to say, hey, in this particular time, I have a need that's not being met that, in, in our friendship. Or vice versa. And so, and we've had those conversations. And I, you know, I, I think that's something that we haven't shared publicly. We just say, we leave it at communication. But I think that's a little more specific version of that same thing. Because it's easy to say, well, you just got, you, you just got to communicate. You got to talk things out. But like, even after all these years, when you find that like, if you have a certain need in the friendship that's not being met, it's a hard thing to say, you know, yeah. that's a, it's a very vulnerable moment, right? And then on the other side of it, though, is this, you know, a renewed connection and a renewed bond that I think we've been through that a number of times. Yeah, so this may seem like a tautology or circular reasoning or whatever you want to call it, but the best way to maintain a friendship long term is to continue to be friends. <laughs> right? And it and don't expect it to be easy. And and it, and understanding that it's a commitment. And I think the same thing applies to relationships, you know. We could really quickly right, right. transfer this into marriage advice. Um, you know, when we got into our marriages, it was under very very specific understanding and we were in a very specific place in terms of our world view. And in that worldview, divorce was not really an option, right? Um, now, we are different people at this point, and I think that there are legitimate reasons for relationships to end and marriages to end. But I think that we still have to approach our marriages as if divorce is not an option. You, you know, obviously, there are circumstances that could lead to that, but I think that you have to go in with the level of commitment that like this isn't going to be based on continual feelings of romance and friendships are not going to be based on continual feelings of compatibility or this the vibes are always good if that's what it's based on the moment that that ends it's just like all right i got more convenient people or whatever it's something that's easier for me so i think that that's where the communication comes in the communication is because 
things are when you when you work on so many things together and you're together all the time in the same way that you get annoyed at your brother or your your sibling that's the, that's the kind of relationship that we have and so understanding when that's beginning to happen and knowing when conversations are required in order to kind of break through that and move to the to the next step has been really pivotal is that good that's perfect it's more than enough thank you, <laughs> thank you. all right guys you can always let us know what you think using hashtag Ear Biscuits, or you can leave us a voicemail. 1-888-EARPOD1. Thanks for joining us at Mythicon. Yep. We'll talk at you next week. Love ya. Hey, Red and Link. My name is Carlin. Uh, we're driving back from Mythicon, and we just wanted to say that uh, seeing you guys go up on stage and do uh, what you guys have always wanted to do with James and the Shame and uh, seeing Charles so proud of you guys and uh, with, of course, uh, Al Khan, Snuggle Baby. Like, you guys absolutely killed it. So awesome to see you guys doing what you want to do. Hi, Red and Link. Uh, my name's Brett. I've been to Mythical Beast a long time. Mythicon was a blast. You guys hit it out of the park. And it was everything I hoped it would be I got to meet Myth crew members face to face, which was so surreal. You guys' live performance and the the time gate bit sent me over the fucking moon. I was dead laughing. It, it meant so much to me to to be here this weekend and to share in the first ever Mythicon. So I just I wanna thank you guys wholeheartedly. The mythical crew everybody working behind the scenes keep being your mythical selves <laughs> especially you dj l count snuggle baby <laughs> well and you too james hi Rhett and link also known as james in the shame and dj l Kelm snuggle baby <laughs> i had a great time at mythicon it was amazing and i just wanted to let you guys know that this year has been really tough for me and my husband. We had a miscarriage and then two follow-up failed IVF cycles. But right before Mythicon, I had uh, another, my fourth cycle. And the day after Mythicon, I found out that I got a positive pregnancy test. So we're expecting, and it just seems so fitting with um, Snuggle Baby, a <laughs> CDJ name just all magically came together. So I appreciate you guys and what you're up to. And thanks for just being your mythical best. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.